You are with Palan, you're an NDTV prophet, and we are going straight across to Rahul Patpardhan, CEO at NIIT Limited. Thank you very much, Mr. Patpardhan, for joining us on NDTV Profit today. Appreciate your time. Congratulations on the two strategic agreements you've signed in China. Describe them to us. Uh, good afternoon, Madhvi. Uh, yes, last week was a very important milestone in NIIT's 20-year uh, history in China. Uh, while we have over the 20 years trained over the 300,000 Chinese citizens in IT in 65 different cities, uh, this is a very different uh, milestone. Uh, for some context, the Chinese central government has been working on what should be the next drivers of growth of the GDP of China, and they recognize that the manufacturing sector is slowing down. Uh, that's the reality of where the market is. Uh, so what they're looking at is the digital economy, uh, which is not just big data analytics, which is just one piece of it, but it is the entire embedding of IT and digital technology into all the traditional sectors and creating a whole economy around that. So that's the big picture plan. Uh, they have started off with a focus on the intelligent big data sector uh, in the province of Guzhou, which is in the southwest province uh, in China. Uh, and they want to focus this province with central government funding and investment to build a big data economy. And we have been invited in to be the partner for the province. And as part of that partnership, uh, we started discussions 18 months ago. Uh, we've signed uh, three deals uh, with three different cities. One of them was signed last week, the biggest one, with the Guiyang city, which is the capital of uh, the Guzhou province. Uh, we've also signed uh, two relationships with two universities and uh, discussions going on with a number more. So the idea really is to create a major groundswell of appropriate skills to support the development of an entirely new industry in this province. So very exciting times. Uh, obviously, it will also uh, help NIT in driving its growth rate uh, overall globally, but in particular in our emerging markets uh, outside India. Mr. Patpartan, the significance of Guizhou, I might have pronounced it wrong, but essentially if you could contextualize the province in which you're setting up base. Yes, Guizhou province traditionally has not been one of the more forward-looking provinces in terms of industrial development. It's a very lovely tourist uh, destination, uh, an agricultural destination, lovely climate. Uh, and that's been the history of that province, uh, apart from being the place where the most uh, famous uh, liquor of China is produced, called Mao Thai. Uh, what the government has decided is that this province needs to be developed, so that is one agenda. But second, the big data economy is a clean economy. It does not require big uh, smokestacks of industries and manufacturing companies, uh, which is in tune with the development strategy of this province. Uh, it's not a provincial strategy, it is a national strategy to roll out the big data industry sector in this province. So as a first step, they have actually got all the telecom companies in China to set up the largest data centers in this province. This has already happened. They are now working to get the largest Chinese IT companies and software companies to also set up large bases in this province. Uh, all these companies have to recruit people. Uh, the skilling of people is going to be the biggest challenge, and that's why we have been invited in to work with the universities and the government to make sure there is never a shortage of supply of all the requ requisite skills. Right. And then finally, there is a focus on attracting foreign companies in the IT and technology sector, as well as to get a startup economy going around these larger companies. So it's a big long-term plan. Uh, we're very pleased to be and honored to be part of the uh, partnership for skill development. Indeed, of course, the Chinese Prime Minister you know, endorsing uh, Guiyang uh, as China's big data hub as well. Mr. Patparzan, uh, I want to just take a step back and ask you how NIIT is placed in China today. Uh, and, and strategically, is it, in terms of your international presence, becoming, uh, you know, clearly the most important market, overseas market? Uh, well, it is clearly a strategic priority market for NIIT, uh, but we must remember that we have a very substantial business in the U.S. and in Europe, in the Western developed markets, which is focused but only on the corporate sector. So we work with the Fortune 1000 companies, supporting their training needs worldwide, and this goes far beyond IT training. It is the entire outsourcing of their training requirements 
uh, for all workforce from managers down to the uh, lowest level uh, workers uh, across any discipline. So that's a different business. Uh, and that will remain uh, a big business for us, which is growing at 15% per year uh, over the last few years. Uh, but in terms of the training and education business uh, targeted at the retail segment and the youth, uh, our biggest market outside India is China, and that will remain so. Uh, we currently have a presence and partnership with eight provincial governments in China uh, and with 150 universities, apart from having a few centers of our own. But our strategy is really to partner with governments and with universities so that we can spread uh, our skill development activity in China on a much faster pace. We're also launching an online business in China uh, for online education delivery, uh, like we had done six months ago in, uh, in India with NIIT TV, uh, which, by the way, won the award for the best uh, online education platform last week. Well, congratulations on that. Uh, I'm going to ask you to address this next question as honestly as you possibly can. After having operated extensively in the Chinese market, given that you seem to be ramping up to the next level, uh, what are the top two risks that that country still poses to NIIT? Uh, the risk is the same as business risk anywhere in the world. Uh, because we do business with the government, uh, it is absolutely imperative that we deliver on the promises that we have made as part of our contractual arrangements. Uh, the government in China is extremely result-oriented, uh, extremely supportive of initiatives which are building the basic infrastructure for the development of the economy, and skill development is obviously the core, especially when you're moving into the digital economy world. Uh, so we have to deliver. As long as we deliver, uh, there are no risks. We don't deliver, obviously there is risk. Uh, we do not have issues of payments and uh, uh, things like that which tend to happen in emerging markets, uh, sometimes including in India. Uh, those, those problems do not exist at all in China. Okay. Can we talk about uh, just, you know, the recent deals, uh, what they bring to the table in financial terms? Uh, you know, uh, to the extent that you can give us some visibility on that? Yes. So uh, I talked about three city government uh, deals. One is the Guyang City, which is the capital city of the province, which we signed last week. Uh, and then we had two deals signed earlier. Uh, one year back, we signed the deal with the Guyan New Area, which is actually an entirely new city built specifically for building the big data industry. Not just an industrial belt, but also a complete university belt has been built and a residential belt. It's like Putrajaya was built in Malaysia many years ago. Uh, and we also signed up a deal with another city, the number two city in the country, which is Tongren. So these are government to uh, B2G or business to government deals. And then we have two university deals and many more in the offing. So collectively, based on the arrangements that we have currently signed, uh, we are expected to train around 50,000 people over the next five years, uh, funded by the government when it comes to the uh, B2G deals and funded by the student when it comes to the uh, university deals. Uh, but this can grow because we are still in the process of discussion with more cities in the province and also with more universities in the province. And are there any noteworthy differences in the financial terms of the B2G deals versus the deals with students? I mean, where the funding is done by the students. Uh, well, the model is in both cases, uh, we are not dealing directly with the student as the uh, uh, customer. The customer is either the university or the government. So in the case of the government, uh, we are retained to train X number of people on defined subjects every year. Uh, the government pays us for doing so. The government provides us the building. The provi government provides us the infrastructure. Our task is to deliver what we are good at, which is capability for training, the content, the faculty, both Indian and Chinese faculty. Most of our faculty are Chinese. Uh, and in the university system, uh, the university already has the infrastructure, the classrooms, the machines, the software. Uh, what we do is we build a purpose-built curriculum which we embed into the university degree program. 
Uh, the university recruits the students, they collect the fees from the students and part of the fee based on the component of work that we are delivering is shared with NIIT. So that's the model in both cases. So it is not a consumer business, it is a institutional business either with the government or with the university. Okay. And, and in both cases we get paid substantially upfront uh, at the time when the students actually join the program. So it's also cash positive business. Okay, so it's a cash positive business. Uh, clearly enunciated uh, out there uh, based on the question that I'd asked. Uh, Mr. Patwarthan, I just wanted to get a sense again, broadly, I'm sticking with the financial discussion here, whether it is uh, from a margin perspective, uh, you know, uh, better to operate in China versus other markets where I'm not disputing the size and importance of the businesses in other markets, but I'm just wondering from a margin perspective whether China has the potential to deliver more. Uh, well, the facts on the ground today is that our China and emerging markets business, which is what we, the business we do in Africa and in, a, in Indonesia and Vietnam, some Southeast Asian countries, uh, about a year and a half back before I joined, uh, the businesses, these businesses were actually loss making and uh, there was degrowth also. Uh, we exited certain specific uh, countries uh, in Africa and we uh, exited certain deals that we had in China which were uh, old, very old and we focused on very selected activities that we are now working on and now this business is the fastest or one of the fastest growing parts of NIIT and also one of the highest margin generators in NIIT as it, is, as it stands today and I expect that to continue over the next couple of years. Well, Rahul Patparthan, uh, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon on NDTV Profit. A comprehensive discussion on not just the recent uh, partnerships in China, but a sense of just how the China business is poised to grow. Pleasure talking to you this afternoon. Thank you very much once again. We're going to take a very quick break and we'll turn our attention back to the market.